Shalom, sister. Shalom. Kohala. Yahweh Bashim. Yahweh Shai. For a new day, you know, um, I feel truly grateful. So, like, yeah, I think this kind of loud. I feel truly grateful for, you know, for everything that I have in my life. And I just want to praise and say the water to Yahweh Bashim. Yahweh Shai. Uh, for everything. And um, I hope y'all do that every day. And that's why the name of this video is praising Yahweh Bashim. Yahweh Shai. And praying without season. I feel like you should pray without season, and you should praise him without season, cause tomorrow is not promised. Honestly, it's not to prom it's not promised. He, this truth, he doesn't have to keep us in this truth. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have to. When you wake up in the morning, you could wake up with a reprobate mind. You could wake up, you know, going back into the world, doing the things that you was doing before. But through the Most High's mercy and grace, He's allowing us to have this grace period to get ourselves together, and that's why we have to praise Him. And thank him every single day. Like you should praise the most high so much and thank the most high so much. Praise him so like you and praise so much that you don't even know how many times you did it that day. And it should get to that point where it's like, look, I, I prayed today, but it was it has to be more than at least ten times, more than three times, more than just continually throughout the day. Thank and praise you. How about you, Mihal Shai, the most high for everything that you have in your life, for the knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Ask the most high to not give you over to a reprobate mind, for him to increase your uh, knowledge and wisdom and understanding in your household, that he builds your husband up to, you know, lead y'all, um, that he builds you up to teach your children everything that, that you need to teach them, and that he directs your paths in a way that, um, into the kingdom, pretty much. So, uh, that's pretty much what this video is about, just praising and thanking the Most High, and... and it's also about a dream that I had. I'm pretty sure, sisters, everybody has had in uh, situations where the Most High just came through for them just like that. Um, he's always going to be there for us, you know what I mean? As long as we're doing what we have to do. Uh, so, on Thursday, wait, first and foremost, I want to say that, you know, I haven't really been doing, posting a lot of videos, but I have videos that's like all, I have like so many videos that I just need to upload. So, it's not that I, you know, been neglecting the channel, I've just been like, I haven't had time to really edit a whole bunch of videos, so I'll just probably edit them on Sunday or whenever I really get a chance, take my time and edit the videos so I can upload it for y'all. Um, I've also been taking a break from like social media and taking a break, uh, you know, just just taking a break to get my mind together spiritually. You know, after you have a baby, sometimes your hormones can be everywhere and your mind and your thoughts can be everywhere, and lately my mind and my thoughts have been, I've been kind of beating myself up, feeling like I need to go harder for the truth. And um, when I say go harder for the truth, I'm just talking about like in all aspects. I feel like, well, I need to tell my son this. I need to teach my daughter this. I need to do this. And I'm like, look, you know, everything comes in time. Like, you know, you know, sometimes you, in this truth, you can beat yourself up. And sometimes in this truth, you can get a little down. Even though, you know, prophecy is being fulfilled, you get excited about that stuff. But sometimes you can get a little down, like Solomon said. And much wisdom, when you increase much wisdom and much knowledge, it comes sorrow. So, you know, you get a little sad when, you know, you're like, dang, oh, you know, you think about things and you're like, oh, my goodness, you get a little down, you might get a little sad, you might get a little depressed, you're like, oh, my gosh. You know, you think about the trials and tribulations of Jacob and Jacob's trouble, and you think about things like that, you might get a little down or whatever, but, you know, at the end of the day, like the scriptures say, the most high is going to have our back through all the trials and tribulations, but my mind has been, I've been kind of beating myself up, and I shouldn't, I don't deserve that, I don't, I just need to just push and go harder, but, you know, that's just what it is for me right now, I was beating myself up, and on Thursday, so I was beating myself up, just feeling down, just, you know, like, oh man, you know, being here, like the scripture says, like, this, this place is not it, this is not where, this is not our rest, this place is just not for us. We getting killed every single day. We getting oppressed every single day. We we doing we got spiritual battles, going through spiritual warfare every single day. You get attacked by Satan, like you know what I mean. It's always stuff coming left and right, being in this truth. It's really a battle, and that's why you gotta be a strong soldier and endure to the end because it's a it's a battle out here. It's a battle, and you gotta endure and stay strong. And the only way you can do that is by praising and praying to the Most High constantly throughout the day and that's what I did on uh when that's what I do that's what I try to do every single day when I wake up and just all throughout the day but um oh my gosh y'all my dog smells so bad he just passed came over here passed gas and walked away that smells so bad 
but whoo <laughs> but anyway y'all uh, on thursday on thursday night uh i was like oh let me read some scriptures so i read some scriptures to my son and i was reading second address the second chapter and it's just about you know when uh Edris saw you know the angel yahweh shy putting a uh, blessing people in the kingdom and you know blessing those who stood stiffly for the name of the lord and you know and i was like look that's got to be me and my family period that's got to be us like we got to stand stiffly for the name of the lord you know ride or die for you how about shimmy how shy you know i got emotional and i was like dang like you know this chapter was so comforting to me but it's like i'm like i by any means necessary we got to get out of here whether it be by death by you know, even if the most have mercy on us and we getting beamed up in a chariot or whatever it may be, like, I'm like, look, we got to get out of here. So after I finished reading it, you know how sometimes you read scriptures, it's just, just getting your, get your spirit. That's how I felt after I read Second Edges. It don't matter how many times you read a scripture. You could have, I could have read that scripture like 10 times already or that book or I mean that chapter 10 times. Since it don't matter. Sometimes it can just get into your spirit and cut you up. That's what the word do. Sharper than a two-edged sword, get inside your spirit, sorry, cutting you up, you know. So that's how I was feeling, just feeling like, dang, like, you know, comforted. Just like we got to, it was just like, you know, real spiritual. So I read that to my son, and then it was literally right before we were about to go to bed. And uh, I was like, dang, you know, I haven't had a dream in a long time. I was like, I haven't had, like, a spiritual dream in a long time. I was like, you know, it. Would, I thought this to myself. I didn't even... Oh, you want to say shalom? Say shalom. Shalom. Good job. So I thought to myself, I haven't had a dream in a long time, like a comforting dream. I was like, you know, it'll be nice if I had one. And, you know, sometimes I say that. I say that, like, you know, every now and then I might say that or think that in my mind I might not have a dream. But on Thursday night, I had a dream that uh, I had a dream. And I didn't really think about how deep it was until later on. But I had a dream that... um. A Ishmaelite had killed the Israelite, and my husband and some brothers shot or took the Ishmaelite the Ishmaelite out because of, they took the Israelite out. So my husband was burying an Ishmaelite by the side of the house, and um, I was in a like a river. I was in a river with my son, Eli with my youngest son Elijah, and the river was like a nice turquoise, cool blue, and uh, like a dark turquoise. Like the dream was so vivid. And you know how like when you give a baby a bath sometimes you might or if you ever took a bath with your uh, newborn baby like you know you just sway them back and forth if you ever been in a pool and like the water just like goes over their face like this like the water was just getting higher and higher like first it was to like my it was probably to like my waist the, the water was to my waist and then eventually it got so high that it like we had to get out the water and it was crazy because the brothers had went all the way to the beginning of where the water started and they were digging. They were digging to, for more waters to come out. So it was like my husband, my brothers, and a couple brothers in our congregation, they went to the end, they went to like the very beginning of where the water started and they started digging so more waters could come out. So the water started coming out of nowhere, like just gushing out of nowhere. So it was fish, just water, and I'm like, dang, all this fish is water. You know, I'm still, I still got my son. You know, brother's like, oh, call hello, how about you? Know, you know, everybody's happy. And we get out the water. It's like I walk up the water to these steps and I get out the water. But it was getting, the water was getting so high that I had to get out. Like, I couldn't even be in there anymore with my son or we was going to drown. Because I don't know how to swim. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, that was my dream. So I woke up and I told my husband about it. And he was like, yeah, you know, that was pretty deep. You know, we, we talking about it. I'm like, the first thing I think of is living waters. Like, you know, Israel, living waters. The living waters are going to come. I, I don't really pay it too much attention. But, I, uh, you know, usually my brothers and my sisters, we always have dreams. So we always share our dreams with each other and try to figure out what it means, you know, according to scripture. So I sent it to my uh, siblings and my brothers, my youngest brother was like, I don't know what you think it means. So my brother Nakwam, he said that reminds, he said that sounds like Ezekiel, the 47th chapter. So I read it and I just was like, oh, this is sick. This is, this is crazy because that's exactly what my dream was. And the dream was pretty, in Ezekiel, the 47th chapter, it's pretty much talking about destruction of the heathen in Israel, 
you know, being brought up through the living waters. And that made sense in my dream, like the Ishmaelite being destroyed, uh, you know, all the waters coming out. And then it said in the 47th chapter that it was just like a multitude of fish. And that's what, like everything that was in my dream was in that 47th chapter. And that really comforted me. And I really was like, dang, like, the most I really do be on it. Like, so that's why it's like, you really, 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 really got to be on your stuff because the most high knows your thoughts you know even if you don't you don't even gotta say nothing like i didn't even say or pray and ask the most high for a dream i said it would be nice if i had a comforting dream and the most high gave me that comforting dream and i was just like dang like he really did be knowing our thoughts like that's so crazy like who am i for him to comfort me through a dream like that you know what i'm saying and i was just feeling real uplifted in the spirit and and that just, that's just the scripture. It says the Most High is nigh to them with a broken heart. Like, he was nigh to me that night and or in the next day. He can't, you know what I mean? He comforted me, let me know, like, look, like, this, everything's going to be okay. Israel's going to be woken up. These heathen going to be put to death. You know what I mean? You got, the living water still going to go out. We're we going to get this kingdom, Lord willing. Not saying I'm going to get the kingdom because I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody know. But... It was just like a, a comforting, it was real comforting to me. So I really want to say, call hello, how about Shimmy, how was shy? And that I feel like through my praying, through my praying, a lot of, through my praying and through my praising him throughout the day, that maybe he had mercy on me. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I'm telling y'all. Y'all got to pray without season. And y'all got to praise him, up, praise him without season and try your best to keep the commandments because you just never know what the most I could do for you. He comforted me spiritually. You know what I mean? And he didn't have to do that. And it, it didn't just happen, like, out of nowhere, last minute. You just never know what the most I can do for you. So you always got to pray without season. And you always got to praise him. And when you praise him and when you pray him, get on your knees and do it. Just get on your knees. Get on your knees. Be humble about it. Say, you know, Thawadi, how about Shimmy, how shy for everything that you do? You know, for my family and for everything that you've done for, you know, you know, even if you don't have a family for you individually. Thank him for all the things that he's done for you individually. Because like I always say, we could have been died a long time ago. So it's very, um, it's very spiritual, you know, to pray and to praise him. You know what I mean? You gotta, we're spiritual beings. But the fact that the Most High, you know, he knows our thoughts. And the fact that, you know, he answered a thought that I had in my mind, you know, that was real dope. and. Just call Halaya How about Shimmy How Shy? And um, and if you got trouble, and if you have so like if you have trouble praying without season, like I always be telling people, it's okay to set timers in your phone. Like you can have, you know how you got an alarm clock in your phone? Just set it, just set it, just set your alarm clock for like seven times a day. But it should be in you spiritually where you don't even have to do that. You know what I'm saying? It should be in you spiritually where like, look, I gotta do this. I gotta pray. You know, whether it's you walking down the steps, whether you about, you about to bring some laundry up, whatever, you about to go to bed, you about to do whatever you about to do, just pray. Just get down on your knees and praise the Most High and thank Him. Yeah, right? Come here. What do I be telling you about praying? Don't I tell you to pray? <laughs> Look, he got his hands out like he about to pray. Wait, uh they Hold on, so like yeah, he's gonna say a prayer that I taught him. Come, hold on, go around, cause the cord right here. Come up. Oh, you okay? It's okay. Guard up your loins. It's alright. Say the prayer that I taught you. Amen. All praises. <laughs> And Isaiah is a good big brother. He came into the room yesterday, and he asked Elijah, what's the name of your God? Remember? Yeah. <laughs> he said, what's the name of your God? <laughs> so Isaiah be on it, you know what I mean? And that made me feel good. Like, sometimes, like, you know how you beat, like I said, I beat myself up. Like, oh, I feel like I need to do this better for my kids. I need to do this better for my daughter. And I need to be this type of war, better woman for my husband. But then, like, little things like that happen. It's like, I'm all right. I'm doing okay. The most high showing me that I'm doing okay. Like, my son is, you know getting strong in the spirit, dirty face and all, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, dirty face and all. But yeah, I was telling everybody to pray without season because you never know what the Most High could do for you. Yeah. Yeah, and you gotta just thank the Most High, right? Yeah. Cause he don't have to wake us up. He don't gotta do nothing for us, right? What you gotta say about the Most High? What you gotta say? Come on, what are you doing? What you gotta say about your how about Shimmy how shy? And up in the sky. Yep, he's up in the sky. He's falling in the down. And, yep, he's gonna be coming down soon, man. No, that's up by and how about the little guy like that? Yeah, he's up in the sky. Yeah, look, man, this is a real spiritual uh, young man right here. I sing it, mommy. Call hello. Call hello. Yeah, hello. Call hello. Call hello. Call hello. Yeah, how we shy. Call hello. Call hello. Yeah, how we shy. Yeah, how we shy. Call hello. Call hello. Yeah, how we shy. Yay. 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 And this is a song that I make up for all the children. Praising, you know. Yeah. Okay. What, what's your how about shimmy how we shy coming to do? Is up in the sky. Yeah, but what is he doing? What is he going to do? He's watching um, the movie. Oh, gosh. This is a movie. This is his movie. Yeah, it's like the movie. Hey, but the editor look like a movie. That's so funny because this is a movie. Like, this is a movie. This is your How About Shimmy How's movie. And we're just the actors in it, right? Yeah, I got it right. Oh, okay. Now is the time to really pray without season. You got to pray without season now because all of this stuff is popping off. Yeah, You don't end up in a FEMA camp. With dealing FEMA with people. camp? Yeah, no, you don't want to end up in a FEMA camp dealing with the coronavirus. Yeah. You know, I feel like that, that's for the heathen. That's like for the heathen? Yeah, for, it's for the heathen. It's for e this is Egypt all over again. Yeah, all So again. you got to do, just like how about Shimmy how I said, put that... Uh, the lamb's blood over your door. The lamb's blood in this instance is keeping a commandment, so it can Give it a commandment? protect you. Stop, uh, so like you Isaiah, so it can protect you from all the plagues and destruction that's going to come. All right. Yeah. It's, the, it's literally the same thing. You yeah. You gotta be circumspect. You gotta be spiritual. You don't want to end up in a FEMA camp. Yeah, we and, gotta just put it that one. Just that was it. Boy, you you don't want to end up in a FEMA camp. FEMA right? camp. You don't want to do that. Yeah, you who, want to do who that. Who can protect you from that? Yeah, how about Shimmy How Shot can protect you from that? How about him or the guy? Mm -hmm, up in the sky. So you got to pray without season. Yeah. Right? Right. And if you got trouble praying without season, hey, you better fast on it. You better fast on it. A fast on it? Yeah, you got to fast on it so the most high can hear your prayers and see that you're afflicting your soul. What you but yeah, y'all, just, you know, this video is just about, you know, just comforting sisters, letting y'all know that, you know, it's, 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 we're going to face trials and tribulations. You, we're going to get down in the spirit, but the Most High is always going to comfort us. The Most High, we're going to get, we're going to get this kingdom. We're going to get out of here, Lord willing. Here, go, go take that in the kitchen and go, go put a scarf on because I didn't hear you say a prayer and you sitting over here trying to eat this apple. So go and go, go, go say a prayer with Isaiah and wrap your head or something. But, um, but yeah, sorry y'all, but yeah, the whole point of this is to just you know comfort sisters and let y'all know that you know the most high knows our thoughts so you really got to be on it you really got to watch the things that you think about you know the thoughts of foolishness and sin to your how about shimmy how shy so you got to control your thoughts to the best of your ability and you got to really pray without season and praise your how about shimmy how shy without season so that he can be there for us you know even when we don't even ask he knows the things that we need and he'll be there He's only going to be there for you if you're striving for perfection and doing the things that you need to do pertaining to the scriptures. So you're teaching your children up uh, righteously. You being a good wife to your husband. You being there for your husband, even if your husband falling. You being his pillar of rest and helping him back up in the spirit. Whether it's you being there for sisters, when sisters fall spiritually, you're there to uplift your sisters. You got to do what you got to do. You know what I mean? And you got to strive for perfection. All right. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna get you a snack in a minute. So pretty much, that's, that's pretty much it, y'all. Um, you know, Lord willing, y'all stay strong in the spirit. 
um, determined, humble, and meek, and that you examine yourself daily, and that you're just going hard in the word, that you're serious about getting your prayers answered. Panta, panta. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Let's go get a snack. Yeah, right. we did it. Everybody say shalom. Bye bye. Yeah, hello, 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 hello